I did the uh, Madagascar Wildlife Conservation Adventure Project. And I did the Madagascar Marine Conservation and Diving Project. Um, I've always been more interested in the sort of marine-based projects, and also I know that the Madagascar um, project in general is a, like a quite a popular one, and that's been so I knew that there was going to be lots of volunteers and lots of fun. And um, oh, Madagascar is a place that's always got a lot of uh, sort of unique. Uh, biodiversity and lots of different animals that you find anywhere else. I've already done a uh, conservation program in the Amazon, so I thought Madagascar was the next sort of logical step forward, really. Um, well, I was a volunteer in the Amazon, so I was an RA and research assistant at the On the Marine project. So it meant that we, um, for the first sort of two weeks, because I was there for ten weeks, for the first two weeks we sort of got um, comfortable with the marine biology that they had there, and the fish and the coral. Um, and different kinds of invertebrates, and then we learned um, all the fish and then learned to specialise into different groups, and then we did BSPs, which are baseline survey protocols, and measured out by tape and counted lots of fish and just basically marine food conservation. And uh, we did sort of loads of different surveys and monitoring programmes. So basically try and like, establish abundance of animals, how many animals there are in the area, and uh, what sort of habitats they like to live in, and if they have any preferences for that. And so that was across like a range of different animals, so like reptiles, birds, that sort of thing. Um, I'd say, unexpectedly actually, the people who lived in the area, because when you think about Madagascar and stuff, a lot of the time, the wildlife sort of comes into your head as a forefront. You don't really think about the people there, but they were like brilliant, like really friendly, and welcoming, exciting. So I think the people. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm going to give a really mundane answer, um, but it's also quite important. What actually like really shocked me when I arrived was how nice the camp actually was, because I was going out there volunteering, expecting to have really horrible. Uh, conditions, that kind of thing. We had a shower and we had like our, the huts we were sleeping in were really nice and like kept up to date. And we were doing stuff like cooking over a fire, but it was still much more luxury than I would have thought before I went out there. Um, well, my job position in uh, Frontier HQ when I was working here was uh, online marketing and journalism intern. So, uh, the vast majority of the work that I actually did was getting lots of pictures from the field and putting them onto our different sites like our Facebook site and our blog into the wild. And so it was quite tempting to sit at a desk all day to be like, oh, like getting all these amazing pictures in. So obviously it's like, oh, I kind of want to be there. So I decided to go. And um, well, I did a zoology degree when I was at university. So uh, from being here, I sort of worked out a little bit about how organisations like this work behind the scenes, but I wanted to go out and try and further my field career as well, so that's probably the reason why I went out. Well, because I, um, I went on a frontier project as a sort of gap year student, I, I came straight from school, um, I definitely needed the time to like, grow up a bit and uh, experience more than just my sheltered like London lifestyle. So I've definitely grown in that respect, I've learned more about myself and I've learned more about the world as well. And um, I think it's helped me realise what I want to specialise in a little bit more in terms of uh, the conservation work I do. So reptiles, and more, maybe more specifically snakes. Um, I don't really think I could pick one thing in particular. There's so many different things that I miss about there. There's like the sun, the weather. It's so like sort of nice, warm, hot, clear skies all the time. Uh, living on the beach, it was sort of perfect conditions. The people that were there, the animals. Um, but if I had to pick one thing in particular, I think I'd probably say the people that were living with. They were good. Yeah. You don't give. Um, I miss 
because everything out there kind of becomes second nature to you. So, for example, like I just said, living on a beach, is, you just kind of get used to it after a while. But then, like on reflection, just being able to get up and at any point of the day, just go out into the sea and about 20 minutes away, you'd get to an amazing coral reef and there would just be like loads of different amazing fish there and marine wildlife. So. Um, we did loads of stuff, didn't we? Yes. Uh, well, what's it? Articulate. Oh, articulate. Articulate. Uh, snorkeling. Uh, the boys, we set up a, a football sort of tournament on Sundays. Um, what else? Played a lot of cards. Got really good at card games. Played a lot of bridge. <laughs> Makes sound like an old man. I liked bridge club. Yeah, well. Poker. There was some poker going on. Um, Anything else you can think of? Um, we went to Vula's. Oh, yeah. Vula um, was a lady in the village that we went and she cooked for us. And we just listened to Madagascar music, have a bit of a dance. Madagascar music, that's definitely something we did. And uh, there's one more thing I thought of. Uh, reading, that was it. Yeah, reading. Um, yeah, the, a lot of other volunteers did um, do a lot of travelling. I stayed on camp for a long time. I really like the camp life side of things. But um, there was um, a few days off when um, me and the other volunteers and three of the staff uh, rented scooters and just um, went around the island and just saw a few other places, but quite in just the immediate vicinity. But it was still really nice. Um, I was there for a bit longer than Greta was, so I got to go and see a little bit more of uh, Madagascar. Uh, first, one of the first trips I did, we went up to sort of northern Madagascar to a city called Diego, and that was really nice because it's a, a lot bigger of a city than I've seen in Madagascar. It's quite modern and there are loads of things going on there. Uh, I've also been to a couple of national parks, one of them called Montandon, uh, another one in Carina, and they, at Ankarana they had a famous thing called Singi. It's like sort of limestone cliff things that was quite cool to see. Uh, loads of different like wildlife and lemurs and stuff and also uh, for SAP camp as well for the forest project we got to go out and look at the blue-eyed black lemurs in a different part of Madagascar near a place called Ananalava which is quite cool. That's really difficult. Uh, three words would you say? I learned a lot, so I would say eye-opening. Eye-opening. It's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a word melded together. Um, I'd say exciting is definitely one of them. And uh, what other one? Fun. Fun? Definitely fun. Lots of fun. Fun. Um, there's loads of different animals there. We saw uh, chameleons. Oh, actually, we saw uh, one of the species of chameleons that we saw. It's a minimum. It's like one of the smallest lizard species in the world, so about that big. And uh, we found a few of them. Uh, other than chameleons, what else did we see? Uh, geckos, leaf-tailed geckos. They're really amazing. Snakes. Uh, oh, mouse lemurs as well. They're really small and cute. They've got big eyes. Uh, frogs. Those are different things. Um. And on the marine side of things, uh, there were just uh, lots of different tropical fish, uh, like the Moorish idol, which is really small and cute, and it's gill from Finding Nemo. And we've got some anemone fish. And then there was also a uh, marine reserve, which was about a 40 minute boat journey away, where like the fish were absolutely massive, just like a, a general fish would be like this size. So colorful and amazing. And uh, I saw about nine turtles there in total, and they swim really slowly, and you could just like, swim alongside the ages. And Petros, even though his forest may have seen a leopard shark there, we all saw it, but I we found, found it. it. Yeah. It was cool, it was really big. And he was like on the bottom of the um, sea, and then he started moving, and you could just like swim with him as well. Although, you didn't do that. No, I, didn't. I saw him moving. I'd say we had quite a few good parties. Uh, for me in particular, actually, I found leaving parties were the best. Not because people were leaving, I never had to see them again, but because um, lots of people seemed to put in a lot of effort into sort of uh, leaving parties, so those were pretty good. Yeah, the last um, 
like the big leaving party before we all kind of left. Um, we asked a lady from the village to come onto like our camp and um, cook for us, which is really nice. We had like a really long camp table. And we all sat around and had like a typical Madagascan meal, and then lots of dancing afterwards. Lots of dancing. They all say uh, like the music as well. I mean, how would you describe the music? Can't it's tried. It's really hard. <laughs> it's just not really. I mean, upbeat. I think you could say it's upbeat, and they like they like to play their music quite loudly. So there was always like dancing in the village and stuff. Um, and all the kids and all the villagers would be up, and you could just like go over to their different different houses, and there'd always be like loud music playing, and just dance with all of them. It was really 